Hello and welcome to this VBA for Excel beginners tutorial. Today I'll be covering some VBA fundamentals which should hopefully, by the end of this video, provide you with a strong foundation to start developing your own VBA applications for Excel. So what exactly is VBA? VBA is a tool that allows people to develop programs that control Excel. These programs can range from being very simple, for instance just inserting some text into a worksheet, to the more complex programs that create new worksheet functions or automate repetitive operation. Now to get started with VBA, the first thing you'll need to do is get access to the Developer tab on the ribbon, which is this top area of Excel. The Developer tab isn't shown on the ribbon by default. To get access to it, you're first need to click the Office button located here in the top left of Excel, and then go down and click the Excel Options button. Once you've got the options up, you'll need to check the box here where it says Show Developer tab in the ribbon. Now if you close the Excel Options window, you'll notice that the Developer tab is now on the Excel ribbon. This means that we can start to develop some simple VBA applications. The easiest way to do this is to use the macro recorder built into Excel. To get started, if you click the Developer tab on the ribbon, you'll notice that there are five buttons in the code segment of the ribbon here. These are the main buttons we will need to develop VBA applications. The first of these buttons is the Visual Basic button. This brings up the Visual Basic Editor, which is where you can edit or create new VBA applications using VBA code. The second is the Macros button. This brings up all the macros which you have previously created in this workbook. Down here is the Security Settings button. This is where you can change the macro security settings. I suggest that you leave it on the default setting of Disable All Macros with Notification for now. The Record Macro and Use Relative References buttons are the buttons that I'll be focusing on in this tutorial. If you click on the Record Macros button, a new dialog box will appear. For macro name, enter 1 to 10. It's worth noting that a macro name must start with a letter and cannot contain any spaces. It's also worth making the macro name as descriptive as possible, as this is what will appear in the macros list. The shortcut key will activate the macro when pressed. I prefer to use key combinations that aren't already used by Excel, so for this macro, I'm going to use Control shift and a Make sure the macro is stored in this workbook, and you can add a description if you like, but I'm going to leave this blank for now. Once you press OK, Excel will start recording all the actions that you do in Excel. You can tell that it's recording because the Record Macro button has now changed to the Stop Recording button. There's also another button to stop recording located in the bottom left of the screen here. Now, the macro we're going to make enters numbers 1 to 10 in cells A1 to A10. So if you just go ahead and enter the numbers 1 to 10 in these cells. Once you're done, press the stop recording button. Now to test that our macro is working, we're first going to have to delete these numbers that we previously entered. Once you've done this, there are two ways that we can run our macro. We can either use the shortcut key that we assigned earlier, or we can go to Macros button here. From here, if you select the macro and press Run, you'll see that the cells A1 to A10 have been populated with the numbers 1 to 10 as planned. However, if you move to cell C2 and press your shortcut key that you assigned earlier, you'll notice that nothing's happened. This is because the cells have been hard-coded into our macro to input the numbers 1 to 10 in cells A1 to A10. But what if we want the numbers 1 to 10 to appear in a different set of cells? Well, to do this, we're going to have to use relative references. So if we delete these cells, and we're going to make a new macro using relative references, if you press the relative references button and then press record macro, the dialog box will appear again. This time, I'm going to call it 1 to 10 relative. For the shortcut key, Excel won't let us use the same shortcut key as last time, so this time I'm going to use Control shift and z Make sure it's stored in this workbook, and I'm going to leave the description blank again. Notice that even when it's recording, you can turn relative references on and off, but make sure it's on for now. And once again, I'm going to enter the numbers 1 to 10 in cells A1 to A10. Once you've done this, press stop recording. Now, once again, I'm going to delete these numbers so we can test our macro. If I go to cell A1 and I press the shortcut key that I assigned earlier, which is Control Shift and Z, you can see our macro runs just as before. However, this time, if I go to cell C2 
and I press Control, Shift and Z, you can see that no longer is it populating the cells A1 to A10, but it's populating, populating the cells relative to the starting cell. This is because the macro cells are no longer hard-coded, but relative to the starting cell. That's all I wanted to go through in this tutorial. I hope you found it informative, and check back for some more tutorials from VBA for Excel.